who you choose as a lender is just as important or more than who you choose as a realtor. And what I mean by most people are going to end up with a mortgage for 15 to 30 years. And there are so many idiosyncrasies uh, in, in, in how you know you could you could lose a lot of money just by a court by, by being charged a quarter percent higher in interest rate than you should have been. This is a shell game that's played by mortgage companies and builders alike. They always they, they'll tell you one thing and they'll do something else. And really, the the after owning a mortgage company for 10 years, I can tell you, I still get the wholesale rate. Sheets. Give me a call if you want to know if what the offer that they're giving to you is a good offer. I don't have a problem doing that for free. And we have people all the time that walk in our office. They happen to be buying a home. They're, you know, we're sharing office with a, another company. They, they find out they're buying a home and they're being charged six and three quarters percent on a mortgage where they should be charged four, five and three quarters. It's, it's a huge financial uh, de devastation as far as debt. I mean, they're going to be charged thousands and thousands of dollars more. All they had to do is call somebody who knew. All right, um, and there's very little education ex uh, requirement to be a, a real uh, lender. Um, we'll be looking at your income and your assets and your liabilities, and you're best off having a letter of pre-approval, either from the credit union or from a local banker, mortgage banker. Uh, have that pre-approval in hand, um, and there's some actually some very very creative financing going on out there right now to help help cover the uh, uh, the mortgage gaps in the market. All right, now, getting out on the road. This is, my, this is going on the hunt. Search for and find the property. You're going to tour a number of neighborhoods, and uh, there will be many factors in your, in your consideration. Uh, there's pros and cons uh, between new and resale, and I could spend a whole seminar on the differences between new and resale. We're not going to go there yet. And the final question I always ask a buyer, and I usually ask the wife, if it's a husband and wife, I usually ask the wife, but does it feel like home? Because it can have all the factors that are exactly you know right, but that they were listed on the things that they needs and wants. But does it feel like home? Okay. Uh, on investment property, as Mo will be talking about later, investment property is not as important on um, whether it feels like home or not. We look at the numbers. We look at the potential appreciation. We look at what developments, what infrastructure is moving into that area that's going to drive prices up. We look at supply and demand. Different for uh, investment property. Negotiations, that's huge. And we get, uh, tens of thousands of dollars are being saved uh, by negotiating. And uh, that's just part of the game. And if you don't have a good negotiator on your side, you might be passing up on tens of thousands of dollars. Okay, your agreement, the contract would determine the terms and timing of the, um, of the purchase. And for those that most people own homes here already know that you have earnest money that you put up. And your agreement will determine who pays closing costs. I almost always have seller pay closing costs, or seller paid buyer closing costs. Basically, you end up financing them, almost always. Okay, your contract's processed, your earnest money's deposited. Yeah, all these other people that you're going to, the title, inspector, appraiser are all put in order. You've been through this, most of you have been through this before. Um, and the loan continues to be processed and underwritten. Inspections. Every time I've done, literally been to thousands of inspections. This is where the uh, inspector goes into the property, and every one of those inspections, I learn something new. Be there for your inspection if you can. You always learn something new. Um, okay, and the, the um, and that's where they check out the entire property. If you can't come to an agreement on who's going to do the repairs of the property, minimal repairs, then uh, your proper your your contract can be extended or canceled, and you can go find another property. Okay, and this is this is your realtors involved in every step of the way of this. We satisfy all the conditions, the con um, uh, and contingencies, and then all the loan conditions are sent to closing. And we do a final walkthrough, make sure everything that was agreed to and the repairs are done. And then we go to closing. And the closing is where you get home ownership. And closing is performed at a title company. And, where, and the closing is where you gain the title. The keys. Oh, come on. The keys. Enjoy the benefits and responsibilities of home ownership. And that's where you're going to ask the referral, I'm going to say thanks for letting me help you sell a, uh, purchase a home, and I'd like to go ahead and help your friends and neighbors, okay? So that's your uh, home buying process uh, in a uh, nutshell. I'll skip over the loan side of things. You can talk to Jax here at the credit union if you want to know about the loan stuff. One thing I can do say is that if you're going to buy a home or investment property, do it while you're a salaried employee. 
don't do it if you decide to go contract or if you're deciding to go and, per and, and start your own company. I think that's a great American dream. Everybody start their own company, but buy the home while you're still salaried because they'll go off the net. I'll look to this. Buy the house before you buy the car. This is an interesting thing that most people don't realize is that your assets to close, the cash, can come from not only uh, the sellers through seller paid closing costs and other rent, uh, it can also come a lot of times if you're dealing with a builder, the builder will pay closing costs more than you would even know. They want to sell homes, right? Right now especially. They're, they're all about numbers. It's a, they're corporations. Uh, did you know your lender can also help with closing costs? Okay, A higher rate will drop your closing costs down, but you've got to have an honest lender. And guess what? Right? Even the realtor can help you pay. How many realtors have told you, hey, I'll step up the plate and help you pay closing costs, okay, or help you with your down payment? So keep in mind, these are all different areas along with your own bank accounts and along with your own 401ks and your own parents to, to lend you money. You can also go after these to help you with the purchase of a property. Okay, one of the reasons I put this chart up is not to go over, it's just to show how many people as a buyer you guys put to work and you pay their salaries for purchasing a home. So you should be treated as a first class citizen you are. Okay, in a resale contract, these every, you're, you're not only paying everybody's salary on this list, but you're also um, allowing that buyer to go buy another house. So there's a whole other group of people that you're, you're also paying salaries for. So you should have your own representation. You should be treated like a first class citizen when it comes to buying this house and not somebody that's on the used car sales lot. Okay, same thing with a new home tract. You're paying a lot of salaries with buying those houses. So make sure that they know that, that you, that, that you demand respect. Okay. Now I'm going to whip through this, the home selling process, because more people are probably be interested in the selling process than the, than the buying process. Um, there are, before I get off buying though, this is a great time to buy, especially with builders. And I can tell you where there's, there's just great opportunities and a lot of it has to do with speculative homes. They've cut their speculative home building back, but they still, if you can get a spec home, which is a home that's being built right now with the intention of somebody like you coming and buying it, you can just hit them right. They're also, um, they're also uh, national stock market companies, so there's certain times of the year, their fiscal quarter end, their fiscal year end is times when you can really just get your best deals. Now, everybody's fiscal year and fiscal quarter ends are different. Uh, so you, us as realtors know, I know that which builders, in fact, D.R. Horton, the biggest builder in town, their fiscal year end is September 30th. So when's it the best time to get a deal from D.R. Horton is when they're giving their homes away because they're not concerned about profit, they're concerned about numbers. Okay, so these are these are insider secrets that you won't get in any other, and it takes it takes years of experience to be able to get those insider secrets. And by the way, insider secrets, and insider knowledge is very legal in real estate. Now Wes cringes over there because it's completely illegal when it comes to stock market. He he doesn't even like us doing the same seminar together when I start talking about insider knowledge, because it is, and that's this is a good old boy state, and that's something that that you know I found out moving here uh, back in uh, in '94 is. is is that th it's a good old boy with the builders. You know, you got it takes years to be a good old boy, and I didn't even know what a good old boy was until I got here. You know, but they will let you know insider knowledge and insider secrets about where they're going and what they're doing, and how many breaks and how many incentives they're going to give you over and above what they will. Even in the realtor community, it's a good old boy community. So, get yourself a good old boy when you're or a good old girl when you're looking to uh, use a realtor to buy a property. <clears throat> 